morning guys so this is the pepper preppers and we are waiting for Catherine to come on today we are going to be doing different varieties of pasta and Catherine is going to be doing the grain pasta so she's going to be making lasagna and I will be making a zucchini pasta which is keto friendly it's also paleo friendly I wanted to mention that I have found some pastas that are uh, grain free, gluten free, that actually are still pasta. One of them is made with chickpeas. This is the one that I really like when I'm not on keto. My husband's on keto right now, and so I've had to do something even more intensive than this. But this is chickpea. It's really high in protein, and I like it a lot. We will try to get it into our Amazon store if I think of it later but we are intolerant to rice and that is a very common type of pasta is one with rice in it but we can't have any grains so this one does really well for us so for those of you who are more paleo or just gluten free there's an option hey Tom hey Mitch how are you so I pulled everything away from the wall and I'm trying to make it so you can actually see what I'm doing this time because usually all you can see is like down to my elbows so we'll see how this goes I do have my because we are off grid again don't have a water system. Here is my wash water here next to me so I can keep everything tidy. I have my cutting board. I have my pan for sauteing and then I have all my vegetables here. And I have my spiralizer back here. This is the first time I've used it. I did play with it a little, little bit to make sure that I could figure it out. And I do like to save all my little peels, my little cores, and they go to either the rabbits or the goats. The more varied your diet is for your milk goats, the nicer their milk tastes. At least that's my opinion. So hopefully you guys can see us pretty well. And again, I'm waiting for Catherine to come on. She is doing the grain option. And what I am making is the garden pasta. And the book is Dining on a Dime. And one of the least expensive ways to eat in the summer is to take things out of your garden. And so this is a very, very vegetable heavy pasta. It looks like it's going to be really good. But I don't want to start without Catherine, so I have to wait for her to come on. Hey, Cassie, how are you? Oh my, Tom said he survived a 70 mile per hour storm in Rapid City last night. That's kind of scary. We had cold weathers last night, thus the sweater in August. We had, it must have been down in the 40s. It was chilly when I got up. Hey, Catherine, how are you? All right, so Catherine, for whatever reason, it is not allowing me to add you right now. It is not giving me the option, so I'm going to continue on and try to sign out and then try to sign back in. We'll see what happens. So the reason that people really like pasta is because it is fast. It takes maybe 10 minutes to boil up your pasta, and then you have something that is super filling that doesn't have to be really heavy on meat. The lasagna, or no, the spaghetti sauce that Catherine is going to be making. Let's see if I can remember. I think it was one, was it 217? It was there with the pizza. It was there with the pizza and the spaghetti sauce and the pizza sauce were kind of combined. And it was very similar to the spaghetti sauce that my mom used to make when I was a kid. Here it is. Okay. So what they call it in the cookbook for your spaghetti sauce is on page 220. It's called Garden Pizza Spaghetti Sauce. And it has all the good stuff. It has the garlic, the onions, the peppers. And again, my favorite food storage item is tomato paste. The reason is, is because it's very concentrated. It costs very little. It's not heavy. And you can make so many different things with it. You can make tomato soup. You can make tomato sauce. You can make salsa with it. You can make pizza sauce, spaghetti sauce, all these different things. Okay, so I have reached that wonderful time in a homesteader's life when your oldest child is able to milk by themselves. And so Paige took care of the chores for me this morning and I am super grateful. So I'm gonna go ahead and start on my recipe and hopefully eventually Catherine's little button will ding up. This is my favorite knife. This is the knife that I use for butchering. I also use it for all of my cooking because it's super, super easy to sharpen. A sharp knife is a safe knife. And this one is called Victorinox Fibrox. And then it is a 40612. And we'll see if we can add that onto the Amazon store too because I've had this knife for six years. 
I had some others. I had one that was more of a filleting knife, and I did not like it as well. It was too thin, which meant, and it was thin and long, which meant that the blade was a little bendy. This one is very sturdy. It fits well in my hand. So I'm going to go ahead and read it. So I'm supposed to put the vegetables in a two-quart saucepan and cover tightly. So I'm going to go ahead and just take the, take the little core out of the tomatoes and get started on this. I had a whole bunch of vegetables left over this week. On keto, you don't eat a whole lot of carbs. You kind of eat them slow and steady. And so when I made my kimchi this week, which if you're interested in mason tops and being able to ferment your own food, we do have those over on the website. So when I made my kimchi this week, I had some green onions left over and some celery and some carrots and other things. And so I like recipes like this where really what it is is a smorgasbord of vegetables that just gets thrown in and you, whatever you want to put in is what you put in and it's your spices and how long you cook it so that your uh, the, the texture is up to you. But they can be really good fillers. My favorite is zucchini and onions, summer squash and onions and sauteing those with quite a bit of butter. Those, that is my favorite summer dish. I was raised on that as a kid and zucchini is a huge way to stretch your budget in the summertime. And I've noticed that a lot of the recipes in this book, the Dining on a Dime cookbook, are that way. They're really good about teaching you how to use leftovers. And if you have even one tomato bush, you can uh, make your own salsas. For us, we like to plant cherry tomatoes for the kids to snack on. And then we like to do some beef steaks for fresh eating. And then we like to do a lot of Roma tomatoes for anything that's going to be a sauce because they don't have as much liquid in them. And that's what these are. These are paste tomatoes. So if you guys have tried the recipe book or if you have a favorite summer dish that uses up a whole bunch of vegetables, what is your favorite summer dish? Like I said, mine is onions and zucchini. That is my favorite, or if it has to actually be cooked, if that makes sense. It doesn't have to be cooked. My favorite food to eat in the summer that is raw, I'm trying to think what that would be. I, I honestly, am, I, I like vegetables raw, but the, the joy of bringing my garden vegetables in and cooking with them and making them something more elaborate I think is my favorite part of having a garden. I don't know, sometimes there's just something different about seeing a homestead meal that is pretty, that, that being displayed it looks pretty on the plate and there's a lot of different colors. And so while I will snack a little bit in the garden, generally what I will do is I will save it and I will bring it in and make some really colorful dish like one of my other favorites is Swiss chard and with the Swiss chard what I like to do is I will bring it in and I will steam it and then I will put it in a in an omelet with onions, so steam the onions, steam the Swiss chard, and then having homegrown eggs and homegrown bacon and that kind of thing. When you look at a plate like that, that is so completely from your property, I'm not sure there's anything quite like it. And I think this is going to be interesting because I generally don't put carrots in with something that isn't going to be a stew. Generally, I would not put carrots in, but I'm supposed to, let's see, yeah, I'm supposed to chop the carrots, I'm supposed to chop everything, everything gets chopped, so even though it has quite a few vegetables in it, everything is supposed to be pretty much the same size, the same consistency, so that when you bite into it, you're getting different flavors, but not necessarily different sized vegetables. My sister said that's a really big deal. And this is my compost. I'm not going to feed the goats onions. They won't eat that. Uh, but they'll eat the rest of this. My sister said that when you make a stew, 
all of your vegetables should be the same size and that way they will cook evenly and have the same texture when they're finished. So if you have some that are really, really big and some that are really, really small, you're going to get different textures throughout the whole thing as far as some will be finished, some won't be. And so some of them will be mushy by the time others, at, at the same time the others are uncooked. So same size makes a difference. I have a friend who likes to feed all of her juicing and leftovers to her goats. I don't remember if she froze it or not. But one of the things you can do is if you're an avid juicer, if you use a lot of vegetables and fruits, you can take the um, pulp afterwards and you can freeze it. And then you can take it out to your rabbits for a treat. And that's what I did the, the last winter that we were here all the time is we would take wheatgrass mats and we would take the um, pulp from my mom's juicing and we would freeze that into, I, into uh, little muffin tins and then give it to him and it didn't have a lot of sugar in it. It was mostly fiber. So it was like this amazing fiber treat for them. And as much as these are really great for your compost, they're even better for your livestock. All right, I'm getting close. And I am a tiny bit allergic to celery, but if I keep it in big pieces instead of uh, blending it into the rest of the food, I can avoid eating it and it still adds that nice flavor that, that uh, celery is known for. And I love this pot. I love enamelware. If you try to cook something like this in just straight cast iron, a lot of times you'll get a dark, greasy finish to it. With the enamel, it keeps the cast iron itself and in curing the oil you put onto it so that it seals it. Sometimes in something really watery, some of that cast iron will still get through, so I don't like to use straight cast iron for things like stews. And it may just mean that I'm not preserving, I'm not treating my cast iron correctly. But that has been my finding is that I love to use enamel. An enamel finish like this is a La Crusette, which is very expensive, but it's the only pot I have that I use for this. And so I think that it's worth spending more to get a really nice pan, especially if you're a minimalist and it's the only one you use. I really prefer quality over quantity. And especially off grid, minimalism can be very important. All right, so I got all that cleaned up. And again, goats and rabbits and such do not like onions. All right, does anybody have any questions? Hello, Darlene. Danita, we are using page 145, the garden pasta out of Dining on a Dime. And with this one, I'm a little concerned that if I put in the green peppers at the beginning, they're going to be mushy, but it does tell me to put them in. So that's what I'm going to do. And I love recipes that don't have a lot of fancy ingredients or too many spices. I much, much prefer a recipe book that is really straightforward. This one has quite a few ingredients, but again, they're all very basic. They're things like green onions, regular onions, tomatoes, celery. And I'm not having to do up a separate sauce pot or anything like that. Everything just gets thrown in together and then gets simmered down. It Okay, so I don't see that it's calling for water, but I'm probably going to add a little bit of water because what I'm aiming for is for this to cook down and I don't, there's no, let's see, nope, maybe I shouldn't, because this has actually five tomatoes in it, which has a lot of water. So maybe the water from the tomatoes will come off and be all right. And I'm only supposed to cook it for 10 minutes. I cook for, cook over medium heat, stirring occasionally for 10 minutes. Add seasonings, cover pot, cook over medium low heat for five minutes, add oil and simmer for 30 minutes or until carrots are tender. And this we're going to be putting over the top of pasta. All right, so I'm going to move this over to my cooktop really quick. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and light the propane really quick. 
And almost always, if I'm in the kitchen, I'm gonna put I'm gonna put my teapot on at the same time because I like to stay hydrated. I make a lot of tea. Um, it just kind of gives me something to look forward to during the day. I'm gonna put the kettle on. It sounds very it sounds very English, but at the same time, if I put the kettle on, I also have water to wash the dishes and add to anything if I need a little bit of warm water. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna put my lid on. And I smell like garlic and onions. So I'm gonna go ahead and wash my hands really quick. I do use a lot of paper towels. The more paper towels I use, the less laundry I have to do. I get the ones that are half sheets. We actually don't go through very many. It takes about three weeks for us to go through one roll of paper towels. But this is compostable. I could put this in the compost. I can add it to the garden. And so I'm super happy with it. We used to use a lot of wet wipes, but they're for the most part not, not compostable. They have a lot of plastic in them. So what is next? I was going to add a little bit more water to my teapot really quick. Yeah, and I am going to add a little bit of water. So th for those of you who are, who are new, we have all of our water hauled from our hand pump. We are off grid. The only p appliance that we have is the fridge. We do have a little bit of electricity for that. We tried for the first three months that we lived here, we tried to live 100% no electricity. And I saw that unless we were gonna become vegetarians, which we tried really hard to go a little bit that way, but it doesn't really work very well for me. Unless we were gonna be vegetarians, we really, really, really needed a fridge because meat and dairy unless you're gonna eat them very, very quickly, it's not safe to have them without refrigerator unless you're going to cure them, which you don't cure things in the summer, you cure things in the winter, or in, at least in the fall when it's a little bit cooler. Hey, Celia Ann. All right, so the other thing I wanted to show you was the uh, noodles that I can make with this. And Again, this, if you are just gluten-free and you want something that's high protein and fills you up very quickly, if you, the, sometimes gluten-free noodles can be just as bad for you as white flour noodles because they're all sugar. They're all carb. They don't necessarily stick with you for very long. These have 15 grams of protein per serving and there's 27 grams of protein in the box. We do like to use legume noodles. What are some of the others we really like? We've used some bean noodles, but what is surprising is that we can get four, four people served off of this box because it really fills you up very, very quickly. Again, it's low in carbs, high in protein, and they are kind of pricey. I buy them when I see them on sale, and generally they're around $4, but we keep a lot of these around if the kids want macaroni if the kids want spaghetti, this is a meal that sticks with them a really long time. For those of you who don't really wanna go the zucchini noodle route. Hey, Catherine, it is still not letting me add you. It has no intention of letting me add you. Isn't that fantastic? After all that time, so Catherine is making this wonderful lasagna and yet we can't see her doing it. Isn't that just awesome? Okay, so this is a spiralizer and you can use it with a lot of different vegetables. All right, so you can use this with potatoes, you can make your own french fries, you can do all sorts of interesting things with it, but a lot of people really like to use it for things like sweet potatoes or zucchini in order to make noodles that are very healthy and allow you to get more of your vegetables in. And if you're trying to stay away from starches, it gives you it gives you something that has the texture of a noodle, but not the same kind of calories, I guess. I don't know, I'm not really into the calorie thing, but I do know that my health suffers when I eat too many noodles that are starchy. So I put this one through already. So I've already got these ones made up and you can see they're very, very long and loopy. And you can buy these prepackaged. It's really funny. They actually prepackage these things. 
and I don't know how much they are, but there's whole companies that will sell you these pre-done noodles, or you can just go get a spiralizer and make make them for a dollar for your whole family. Let's see, see the end said, we're making flourless chocolate zucchini muffins. Mmm, that sounds really good. So this is what they look like. And my understanding is that you put these in with whatever food you're you're going to be actually serving them with because you don't want to overcook them. But I could be wrong. You might have, I, I should probably have looked it up beforehand, but I was running a little bit late trying to get everything done. But this was a fun little tool, a little bit of playing with. goes a long way. And it kind of reminds me of an apple slicer. You know those apple slicers you can use uh, when you're, you're, it cores them and peels them at the same time. That's what this reminds me of. And then this is the inside. I love zucchini. And I'm going to go ahead and cut this off. And the thing I found that was interesting was trying to figure out how to brace it because it is a somewhat flimsy tool, if I may say so. And this is probably going to be really interesting watching me do this from this angle. because I don't really know what some of these things do. It doesn't like, it's not like an instant learn where you look at like, oh, that's where that goes. Oh, okay, that totally makes sense. It's not one of those. It's one of, instead it's more like a, hmm, like that. Okay, so I'm gonna wash that off. And we're gonna try that again. It was easier before because I could stand up, but you can't see me. We'll see if we can get this to work. Like it did less than half an hour ago, but now it doesn't want to. There we go. All right, so can you see that? Once it gets going, it's actually very, very fast. And you can see this funny little core that just comes right out. And it does have this little suction cup on the bottom, but it's not wanting to suction onto my little metal tray that I have here. And then I want to stop before it starts to cut the teeth of the little feeder. There, I heard it come out. Pull out this funny little little core. I hardly have all this stuff. I'm gonna go check on my vegetables. Do you like my wall? This is a battery operated lantern that if I'm filming and I can't get enough light, I will turn it on. And this is what my wall, you can see I've got all my baskets in here. And then I have these little S hooks that hold my tools. Okay, I'm gonna go stir this really quick. There is my mess. There are my vegetables. So this, this I'm going to, I'm going to let this cook for another 10 minutes until it starts to steam. And then I'm going to add my garlic powder, a little bit of onion powder, a little bit of basil, oregano, and so I'm going to add my spices in and then I'm going to let it cook for five minutes covered and then I'm going to add my oil and what I'm going to add for my oil is I love avocado oil so I'm going to add my avocado oil in and then I'm going to let it simmer until the carrots are tender so that's what I'm going to do and then this will be finished I'm sorry I don't get to let you see the finished product but I really want you to see Catherine's lasagna 
So make sure you go check that out. If you want to check out our Amazon store, we'll have it in the link in the description. It just shows all the inexpensive tools that we really swear by that we can't get into our actual shop yet. And you're welcome to go look at our shop if you're interested in Mason Tops Sun Ovens, which we're going to be demonstrating those as soon as we have them. So stay tuned in. Catherine's going to go live here in a second, and I will go watch that as I finish up cooking my food. I think the spiralizer is pretty cool, and I will be adding that into our store if we don't have it yet. All right, so we're going to switch over, and Catherine is going to do her live show now, and we'll talk to you later. And I was cooking along with Julie as she was going with her pasta salad, and I am making zucchini lasagna. Good morning, Mandy. So I'm trying to figure things out on my end. Hello, Jay. So I don't know if you guys caught. Good morning, Angela. Thank you guys for hopping on over and forgiving me of my awkwardness. I swear one of these days Facebook is going to let me do this seamlessly. So if you guys didn't catch Julie just a few minutes ago, she was working on the garden pasta salad out of Dining on a Dime. And since it wouldn't let me on this morning, I just went ahead and I was cooking along with her. Our intention was I was going to do zucchini lasagna side by side. And so this is all about using the harvest from the garden. And I'm sure if you guys are anything like us and you have a garden going, you just have zucchini coming out your ears. So uh, this week we've made zucchini fritters, zucchini bread, uh, working on this zucchini lasagna. What you guys missed while I was cooking is because lasagna is kind of a wet vegetable, as I went ahead and grilled my slices before I'm going to incorporate it into the zucchini. And that way when you have your zucchini, I don't uh, know if you guys have ever made zucchini lasagna and experienced that like wet product when you're done. This is one way to ensure that you're going to have a really nice and not soggy lasagna. So, hey Julie, okay, so I'm on now. I swear Facebook has something against us. We have everything working, we're seamless, we're doing test runs, everything's fine, then we get on and everything falls apart, which I guess is just typical. So, hello. Yeah, right, zucchini coming out the ears, Mandy. It's one of those gifts from the garden that just keeps on giving. So what I've done while I was cooking along with Julie too, so all oh, thanks for all the hearts guys, is I went ahead and cooked down some uh, onions and garlic here. And I made earlier the spaghetti sauce from the Dining on a Dime cookbook and I put it into the refrigerator but I didn't add my onion and garlic because we don't always use it for lasagna. Oftentimes I have this in the refrigerator and we use it for like pizza sauce. So rather than having it chunky and ready to go, depending on what dish I'm making, oftentimes I'll throw in some veggies right at the last minute to my pizza sauce or spaghetti sauce. Instead of ricotta, and I'm hoping my daughter's not watching right now, as if she is, don't tell her, I am going to use goat cheese. So, and uh, because I make mine more like a snacking cheese, it's kind of a dry cheese, I add some milk to it to make it more of a ricotta consistency. And so there again, it's one of those, kind of like the spaghetti pizza sauce, you can make it ahead and then tweak it depending on what recipe you're going to incorporate it into. So if you want a softer, runnier cheese like a ricotta, you can add more milk into it right before you use it. Or like I said earlier, I use it more like a dryer. We use it, we eat it on crackers. We stand at the refrigerator and eat cheese and because we're like teenagers, I guess. So what I'm going to do now, because I've got this all ready to go, mostly because I stood here cooking while Julie was doing her thing is I am going to, I had some older pizza spaghetti sauce in the refrigerator and it gets a little firmer. Like um, when you make it originally, it tends to be a little watery. If you leave it in your refrigerator for any period of time, it will get thicker. And so there again, depending on what you're making, you can change its consistency at the point in time you're putting together your recipe. Um, but we'll incorporate our vegetables at this point. So Julie and I, we've kind of made it a mission to try and bring you guys skills. And it seems a little silly that cooking things like lasagna are considered a skill, but we've also realized that in our modern society, that there are a lot of people who have never been taught how to cook. 
And so specifically with our children, as we really want to make sure that they have these skills and abilities to not only cook for themselves, but just to have that confidence. And it's really empowering to be able to do things for yourselves and not be dependent on store-bought products and so much healthier. So good morning, Celia. Hello, Cassie. So yeah, I love farmer's cheese here too, Julie. So, and she put the link to the recipe. I did write out a recipe. I uh, occasionally teach cheese making classes here in my town. And we did a farmer's cheese class recently. And so I went ahead and put up my recipe. It's in our Etsy store and also dirtpatchheaven.com. And when you put together lasagna, or really most Italian recipes, uh, so you're gonna wanna put your base layer down here of sauce so that that way your, if you're using traditional noodles or zucchini, it, it, they won't stick to the pan. It's gonna have that little sauce as a base layer there. And I am definitely going to need my whole jar here. And so you just layer it. So what I'll do is I'll put down some zucchini here. Some of the farmers, which is now more like a traditional ricotta. And we'll do a layer of that. And with lasagna, you can prepare more than one pan at a time and freeze it for later use. Oftentimes when I make meals, I, we have a refrigerator and freezer outside and I will make more than one. And that way on, because I am a working mom, on um, days that I'm rushed and get home late and need something just to pop in the oven, if we have some pre-made meals ready to go, it makes life so much easier. Because even though this isn't a hard recipe to put together and it doesn't take a lot of time, if you can shave off that 5, 10, 15 minutes on your day and just make life a little easier, that is always a good thing. So I do have mozzarella here that I sliced up. And so I'll just put down a layer of mozzarella. You can shred this as well, just depending on how your family prefers it. So good morning all. Hello Tara. Hello Jill. So let's see all. Cassie. So, all right. So I saw earlier, Celia, that you're making flourless chocolate zucchini muffins. That sounds delicious. So, and definitely zucchini, the more ways you can utilize it, the better, because I know if you're just using it one way, and that's a surefire way to burn a family out on anything coming out of your garden. And if you're trying to encourage your kids to eat healthy and to embrace your homestead and embrace fresh vegetables and foods coming out of your backyard, uh, don't keep serving it the same way because they will get tired. And so then in their mind, they're going to say, I hate zucchini because, and it, they'll have it like in the set, this is how zucchini is. But if you can offer it into many dishes and they can try it out, uh, they can have a broader view of what any individual food is like. So hello, Elena, good morning. Thanks for joining us. So I am making zucchini lasagna and I was telling everybody that we just have a ton of zucchini. It is coming out our ears. And in fact, I am working on our fall garden and I'm most likely going to pull our zucchini plants out. I think they're towards their end of production, and I think we're towards the end of our zucchini consumption, and it's time to move on to something a little more fun. So uh, we're more spring and fall garden people anyway. As I, this year, I didn't plant any tomatoes, and we're definitely missing tomatoes. Fresh tomatoes, there's nothing better than that. So but I planted all of my chili plants at work inside in pots because I've decided rather than running them as annual plants, I want to have perennial chili plants. So I've got peppers, uh, I've got jalapenos, I've got Anaheim peppers, and I've got Tabasco peppers all growing in my windowsill at work. And so I'm cautiously optimistic that they'll do well there. It's kind of an experiment for us this year. So, and that's something that I love about the homestead is it's always, it's like this real life ongoing experiment and you get to 
change things up and try new things and try different varieties and uh, try different locations in your garden and uh, something may work great one year and may not work at all the next year and so it's just there's always this evolving process and it's really it, it keeps you on your toes it makes you constantly learn you become a student of nature you become a student of uh, all your local insects and it's just it's really been homesteading is an adventure so I am adding so that's my second layer there and we will add more pasta sauce and here you just want to cover it so that your zucchini isn't poking through and I'll probably jar up whatever I don't use here actually it's not that much we'll just go ahead and put it all And I am not going to cook this right now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put some foil over the top of it and pop it in the refrigerator and we'll have it ready to go for tonight. So today, um, my buck goat, I not so lovingly call him Satan. So he's a good boy. He does his buck job well, but he's also big and strong and he's kind of broken out of his pen. So we need to do some fence repairs so I Julie says okay uh, Cassie says I'm thankful my husband has a green thumb I kill every plant I touch oh isn't that funny sometimes some of us are really good at those things and sometimes for whatever reason we're not as I used to be a wonderful gardener and it was my favorite part of the homestead and now I've realized that I grow protein a whole lot easier than I do my fruits and vegetables. I kind of struggle. We used to have our garden at our business and it's fully fenced in and it was much easier to grow there. But then we moved it home and I battle, mostly I battle my own chickens. So, and I'm very determined to free range my flock. For some reason I'm hard headed about that. I want them to do what chickens do and do what ducks do and have freedom of movement and because that's really been the crux of my homesteading is I want to ensure that the food that we're ingesting and consuming has had a quality life and that really boils down to what pushed me into this lifestyle is I want to know what we're consuming I want to know what's in it I want to know what isn't in it and if it was some sort of meat product I want to ensure it had a great life so uh, so I let my I let my flock range and even though we have our garden fenced in it doesn't matter what kind of defenses I put up they they're smarter than me apparently so they like to they like to destroy I can't put it any other way if I love them I appreciate their function on our homestead they and me battle for my garden so essentially this is it so you can see that was not difficult as I just grilled the zucchini came in layered it and heaven Henry says are you putting flour or something on those no no flour so all that's in here is I grilled some zucchini slices and then I've got my spaghetti sauce which is uh, just it's tomato sauce it's got garlic powder it's got Italian seasonings it's got sauteed onions sauteed garlic and then I've got my homemade ricotta goat cheese and the mozzarella and that's all that's in it so it, it doesn't get any simpler or any fresher than that as I wish that I had homemade goat mozzarella but I didn't have time to put that together so and you just you just layer it and that's it so really uh, don't be intimidated if you are not a cook at home if you're not a make it yourself if you are a buy it from a box and serve it to your family don't be intimidated you can do this you can grow a garden zucchini is like nearly foolproof and it's one of those that when you plant it it just keeps on giving and so it's one of those also that you got to get creative and figure out what to do with it so zucchini lasagna is beautiful 
If you guys didn't watch Julie's video earlier, she put together a garden pasta salad, which I'm sure is also going to be beautiful. I'm hoping she posts her finished product when we're done here. And tonight, after we cook this, I'll be sure to take a picture of this and post it for you guys. But again, don't be intimidated by home cooking. If, if you have don't feel confident in your skills, we recommend this book because it is super easy. Every one of our recipes is minimal ingredients, minimal prep work, minimal uh, time. Really, the only time involved in Tara's recipes are the cook time. So we thank you guys for joining us this morning. Again, if you didn't catch Julie earlier, she put together another recipe involving zucchini. We're hoping to give you guys some thoughts and ideas so that you're not doing the same old, same old with your crop, so that your family can enjoy your harvest and embrace your homestead lifestyle. And you too, so that you're not getting burned out on the same old, same old recipes. We encourage you to get creative and have fun with your food, because that's the whole point of raising food. So that's it for me today as we're so glad you joined us. Do please check out our stores. We have dirtpatchheaven.com as we have some great items from Amazon that we can't necessarily stock ourselves but we stand behind and we believe in. So those are, we'll link our store because we do have a store through Amazon. We do get a small portion of every sale you guys do through that link and we do appreciate all your support. As I sent out several soap recipes, or not recipes, uh, soap orders this week through our Etsy store. And again, I, I know that it's not much to you guys at times. Uh, we come in here and we're recommending stuff, but every purchase supports what we're doing here. And we just, we, we really thank you for that. So until we see you later, and so you guys have a great weekend. Talk to you later.